Okay, so his question is, um, sometimes, occasionally, or frequently, you get the feeling that you're not doing enough on your spiritual path, that um, you need to do more. How to, A, build that spiritual discipline, so you know you are doing enough, and how to keep yourself motivated, correct? Yes? That's your question? We'll also not stress out too much. Yes, okay. <clears throat> and not stress out too much. So, if you look at traditionally the way we have brought up human race, we are eternally fed with guilt. All the major religions of the world, they make us believe that whatever it is that you're doing, it's probably not enough. Because something that's most fundamental to human nature whether that's desire, or a sense of adventure, or um, even laziness, or anything like that. All of that has been deemed uh, pretty much sinful. So to get beyond the feeling that I am not doing enough, there are two ways to accomplish that. One is to be honest with yourself and say to yourself, am I doing the best I can? If you're doing the best you can, you are already doing the best you can. There is no more to be done. And second, which is equally important, is that's why we usually have a guru in our life. Because when you have a master, when you have a guru, then you simply have to follow what the guru tells you. Guru might assess you, guru might see or understand where you are on the path, how much effort you need, how fast or how slow you need to go. In fact, that's the chief reason of having a guru. Because think about it for a moment. If you have read my books, you already know all that I may have to say about sadhana. Then why have a guru? It is so that I can look at you individually and say, I think this is a change we need here, or I feel this is a transformation we need there, or maybe this is what we need to do differently. Now, if you are putting an honest effort in your guru's instruction, then your job finishes then and there. But if we are not following the instruction of the teacher or of the master, then we have to overcome the feeling of not doing enough on our own. For example, if I say to somebody, you have to meditate for five minutes and for the rest of the time you can do whatever you like. If they think five minutes is not enough, then I cannot help that person. I cannot help that, that person feeling. If they think, no, five spoons of sugar, teaspoons of sugar uh, are not enough in uh, a bowl of rice pudding. I must have put 50, and unless I put 50, it won't be sweet enough. Now, that is their problem. So the, the main thing to remember to avoid stressing out is to know that you, while you may be trying to get to a destination, it's the actual journey you want to enjoy. If somebody says, my goal is to build a, a billion dollar company, 
sure that goal can be their motivational a motivating factor they can keep pushing towards it but if they say i would only start enjoying once when i see a billion dollars in market cap or my bank account or revenues or whatever then they would miss out on the actual joy of the journey itself so there was a, a, a rabbi once and if you know any bit of judaism then you know in the jewish tribe it's uh, you don't really eat pork you know you don't eat ham and so on so this this guy was jewish and he felt he went inside a restaurant and he looked around he couldn't see anybody jewish there so very quietly he said i'll have a hamburger so uh, so he had a whole meal when he had the whole meal and he finished and he paid he went out a man came running behind him he said recognize me he said um i am the rabbi and i saw what you did in there you ate hamburger and i saw you doing that he said rabbi what are you saying he said i saw you okay don't try to escape he said are you saying you saw me going in this restaurant he said indeed and you saw me order you saw me order that food hamburger he said yes and um you saw me eat that he said yes well then i don't see what the problem is everything i did was under your supervision he said <laughs> so i am uh, relieved i carry no sin because you were there you were supervising and you approved it so sometimes when a seeker is walking on the path a seeker's knowledge is very bookish or second hand every seeker is mine was as well i always thought i always thought i knew what a guru should be like what a true guru would be like or what a sadhak would be like but all that knowledge was conditioned i either read it or heard it or or you know basically been told by somebody which is the same as heard it so i either read it or heard it but when you keep walking the path and as the uh, truth starts to dawn it's like watching the sun rise it doesn't happen instantly first you see a bit of light and then you know the sun is rising and then you see the actual planet sun coming out like a dunkin donut or something from behind the mountains and then you see the actual sun and things don't heat up right away the temperature rises the mercury rises as the day progresses similarly to think enlightenment is a one of moment is actually not true in most cases and even when you have what we call the satori an instant realization it, to live through that realization to to carry forward with that realization it takes effort and learning and experience so your spiritual practices <clears throat> unless you are doing some specific sadhana and going through the intense mode should not be more than a manageable portion of your routine daily routine imagine you want to put on some muscle imagine you want to do body building and you want a six pack or an eight pack or something like that now you have two choices Do you think spending 8 hours in the gym is going to help you build your body faster? Absolutely not. 
Yes, you may go from 60 minutes to 90 minutes or maybe two hours. Okay, you'll do cardio every day. You will focus on different part of your body every day. But you still need adequate sleep. You still need to eat properly. Gym is for toning. Muscles are actually made in the kitchen. So your spiritual practices are for toning your uh, spiritual uh, caliber, if I may use that term. The actual building happens in the world out there when you have to deal with people, meet with them. Are you being kind to them? Are you being gentle with them? Are you sincere with them? All those things, they together combine and form the great sadhana of awakening and liberation, of emancipation, of moksha, of nirvana. So if somebody is unable to sit still for two hours, it's okay. But if for the rest of the 22, they are engaged in things that are counterproductive to their spiritual growth, then that's not okay. So what really matters is do the best you can. And if you, if you are sincere and give yourself some, um, you know, cheat time, it's okay. I mean, you cannot meditate every single day. Some days it's okay to skip it. It's not a crime. Buddha is not complaining. It's okay. You know. But if you make that your daily thing, or oh, today I don't feel like meditating, and yesterday I didn't feel like meditating, and the day before I was a little tired, and the day before that I was unwell, and the day before that uh, I really didn't have the time, then we have an issue. So even if you do a little bit, it will all add up. And the way to, to remain motivated is to keep challenging yourself. Because when you challenge yourself, you get to the next level only when you challenge yourself. If you keep doing the same thing, you may get better at it, you may even get perfect at it, but you will not know the next level. You will hit a, le a point of saturation, that plateau, and, and that then growth is stagnant, and then you feel, I am getting nowhere. Nothing motivates like progress. When you feel, I am going somewhere. When you feel, I am succeeding on the path. And for that, you know, you, if you are sitting down, doing your practice for half an hour, or for 45 minutes, whatever it is, just put in very quality time. And that's going to make all the difference. And remind yourself, if meditation is your path, that first few thousand hours, there is not much that's going to come out of it. There will be, but may not be readily noticeable. It might not be consistent, at least. Consistency will come with great practice. That's my answer.